from my sorrow to gladness I have you what more could I want so raise my faith a little higher set my spirit on fire Lord we're asking you to move you're the God of restoration the one who gives salvation
morning, church family. It's such a gift to be able to share with you from the Word of God. We are going to jump right into Matthew chapter 4, uh, starting in verse 12. Uh, I'm just going to read straight through to the end of this chapter. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, this is John the Baptist, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, Jesus went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their, brother, with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Wow. Je news about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Amen. So as I as I read uh, this passage uh, and and look at the sections of of the the setting the the context that the writer sets as well as the narrative that he continues to unpack, I there's four themes that I want to draw out uh, as we go: uh, themes of hope, repentance, humility. And power. And in the kingdom of God, I believe that there is a strong correlation uh, between these four uh, values or, or, or concept or, or heart postures, rhythms of life. And so here we have verse 12. Uh, Jesus hears that John has been put in prison, so he changes his location. He moves up to the area of Galilee. And, uh, you know, according to historians and theologians, uh, Galilee was known as kind of a backwards area, uh, uncouth, uh, not the, the place that you expect a king uh, to, to do the, lay the groundwork for his kingdom, but that's where Jesus goes. And uh, Matthew, the writer here, looks back to Isaiah and pulls out this prophetic uh, passage out of Isaiah 9, which is, we, which is where we get uh, the, the, the prophecy we so often go to uh, at Christmas, uh, of unto you a child is born. So but before, we, before Isaiah gets to the unto you a child is born, there's these verses about Zebulun and Naphtali. And Zebulun and, uh, and Naphtali, two tribes of Israel uh, in the Old Testament, that those tribes and the land allotted to them, to them went through a pretty rough time of being conquered by enemy nations, being conquered back by Israel. And, uh, you know, in the midst of the narrative of Israel and Judah uh, turning away from the Lord and then being conquered by their enemies, uh, Zebulun and Naphtali had an extra rough time. And so uh, at, at the point Isaiah's writing, he uh, is proclaiming hope over Zebulun and Naphtali, and, and over Israel uh, as well. And, you know, in, in looking at the Old Testament through uh, a, a Jesus lens, uh, I just want to say that whether the experience of darkness was a result of oppression, so think Israel and Egypt, you know, when, when Joseph moves to Israel and, and, and the Israelites multiply uh, and they become oppressed by Egypt. Uh, so they're, there's, they're experiencing darkness as a result of oppression or other times as a, as a consequence of rejecting God. So the resulting judgment on Israel for forsaking the covenant. Uh, God speaks redemption 
over his people. And, and ultimately, the, the redemption, the fullness of our redemption is found in Jesus, uh, in him laying down his life to take it up again, to, in defeating death, uh, sin, and Satan, and, and his victory uh, as he raised, was raised from the dead. God speaks redemption and hope over us in, in the places of darkness uh, that we are living in. He speaks hope over us today. Uh, and that hope is Jesus. It's not, it's not a feeling. <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, something we just conjure up. It's a person. Uh, and, and I just want to say here, uh, especially as we move into repentance, that you know, in many many times in the New Testament, uh, Jesus is preaching and teaching using figurative language. He's got parallels and analogies and parables, uh, but Jesus, being a king, is not figurative. It's not a parable. Uh, it's not an analogy. Our king is a king, and he has a kingdom, and he has a people, and 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 his bride is his people. And so I just want to say that whether it's it's hope in 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 the 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 yes we have redemption in Christ there's a now uh, of experiencing his redemption but there is a not yet when all of creation is groaning for the fullness of our redemption as sons and daughters and uh, and whether it's in, in in the groaning of our broken bodies and, and longing to live in the fullness of his presence or whether it's uh, I think this is so important to, for this to be the uh, said from the pulpit that no political party uh, no 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 political jockeying and manipulation uh, can can use the kingdom of God the kingdom of God is above that and and all that's been playing out in our country right now where the church has been used uh, for for political gamesmanship that has nothing to do with the kingdom of God uh, uh, his king his his kingdom is completely separate and you can't separate the king's ways from his kingdom. So I would say if you look at, at people advancing ideologies and, and political uh, agendas, if they're not doing it according to the way that the king has, has laid out, they can, they, can, they, can, I, they can identify themselves with Jesus all day. But everybody around them, even non-believers, are going to call, call out their hypocrisy. And so there is a soberness to this season. Uh, of the church walking in humility, the church making our king first and foremost in our allegiance, uh, in, 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 in our pursuit of righteousness and justice. Uh, and so here we go, hope. And then Jesus, Jesus takes up this proclamation that, that John the Baptist had already been calling out, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Jesus is announcing his kingdom with a call to repentance. That is, that is no joke. That, that's no coincidence. That the, that the initiation of the proclamation of the kingdom by Jesus is a, is a, is a call to repentance. And I just want to say that, that repentance can be a, a heavy and sober thing. But living a lifestyle of repentance uh, yields freedom. It yields healing. It, it, it's 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 living outside of shame and, and condemnation. So I want to rejoice in this call to repentance. Uh, that that repentance, yes, it's alignment with the the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's surrender uh, to His authority. Uh, which is then, then, then yields to if if we're surrendering to his authority, then we're surrendering to to what he says is good and right and true and beautiful and just. So he's the one who defines that for us. We don't have to look outside of 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 the Godhead for a definition of what is good and true and right. Uh, his spirit is in us, uh, so he is shepherding us on a moment by moment basis. Uh, and what it looks like to follow him, and following him means recognizing that there are that there are choices and motivations and and thought processes that are not in alignment with who he is. And as his spirit brings conviction, 
acknowledging that, uh, repenting, asking forgiveness, uh, and choosing to walk another way, and, and, and knowing that learning to walk another way is, is it's a journey. It's not just a destination. We, there's, we are on this journey of being molded into the image of Christ. Uh, re- him revealing blind spots, uh, places in us that are bent, rebellious, wounded, uh, places where we react. Uh, and this, uh, this is an exercise. This is a rhythm uh, of, of life, of, of confession, uh, repentance. And, you know, right now in my life, more than ever before, and I really believe uh, in, in, in our journey as a church body, this is true as well, that uh, one one of the most one of the hardest uh, places uh, of repentance, and this is going to to lead right into humility, it, it, it is yielding the right to be offended. Uh, and oh my, uh, how how hard is this? And that uh, it, it, it's so in some ways it feels so complex be, because if 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 one is on the the receiving end of injustice and oppression that does not mean for for the for the person who is being oppressed or those who are who are wanting to enter in with them to call out for justice that does not mean that that we hold back in crying out to the lord and crying out uh, uh, to uh, systems of power, etc., in, in ways that we can, uh, but personally laying down the right to hold on to offense. Uh, oh wow, it's not a it's not a small thing, and so I I just want to invite you, regardless of whether it's just day to day relationships in your household. Uh, It it could be issues surrounding politics right now. Uh, It it could be issues of uh, just just really being hurt and raw and and you know living in on you know in an ongoing experience of trauma in 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 terms of racial injustice and racial uh, oppression. Laying down the uh, the right to be offended and to to act out of offense, um, it, it it's 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 a God thing. It's not something that we uh, can do in and of ourselves, and I don't think it's something that just happens uh, in isolation. The the the, the finding refuge in the Lord uh, and Him initiating places of healing. I believe is what what starts hope, <laughs> him bringing hope, him speaking hope, uh, and and beginning the healing process in us. Uh, I believe lays a foundation for us to 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 yield our right to be offended. But I just want to invite you to to interact with the Lord in in the coming days, uh, and ask him what does it look like for for me personally to lay down uh, the right to be offended when when. Uh, I uh, feel like I am unjustly treated, or when uh, my expectations are not met. Humility. So Jesus uh, is walking uh, along the Sea of Galilee. There's uh, so he runs into some fishermen, and uh, you know, culturally, societally, uh, pretty much anywhere you go. Fishermen aren't the highest on the uh, on the totem pole of class or earnings. And maybe there's maybe there's some huge conglomerates that are doing fishing these days. They're that are raking in the dough. But fishermen uh, are are it's a humble profession. Uh, I don't know when the last time you walked through a, a fish market uh, or uh, you know hung out on a on a fisherman's boat. But it is grueling work. Uh, I actually have a brother-in-law who is is a, a, a fisherman in Alaska, and that might be the one caveat. <laughs> it, he he and his wife do heavy duty work uh, for for days on end, but they get to do it in one of the most beautiful places on earth. Um, but so Jesus Jesus calls uh, these men to follow him, and they're fishermen. They're fishermen. 
and man, you, I, I mean, I feel like I could, you know, keep, keep drawing this out, but, you know, it could be said, well, you know, fish, they said they left their, left their, their nets behind, uh, two of them left their dad behind along with the nets. And, you know, one could easily say, uh, well, they didn't, you know, they're, they're just fishermen. They didn't have that much to lose. Uh, and, you know, position, power, prestige. And in some ways, I think you're right. Because Jesus said, blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He also says, blessed are the poor in heart, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The, this juxtaposition of the, the physically poor and those who recognize uh, are, are the, the absolute spiritual, emotional, physical our, our brokenness of who we are and our need for the Lord. And so, yeah, I think you're right. They didn't have as much to lose. Uh, they had a whole lot to gain. And so when Jesus says, you know, it's so hard for the, for the rich uh, to enter the kingdom of heaven, I think, it's, I think it is a sobering uh, glimpse of the, the upside-downness of his kingdom for, for those of us who live uh, in, in relative uh, ease, free from a, a, a lot of or having more the, a sense of more control in our lives and having basic needs met on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I, I alongside repentance and confession and uh, a, a willingness to lay down our rights to be offended. Uh, I believe that uh, cultivating. Uh, humility in all that we do as, as who we are as his people uh, is it, it's make or break it's not just a matter of you know can we can we survive on a day-to-day -day basis just getting getting our daily life stuff done I, I, I believe that the church it's a make or break um, posture for the church in in this season of history is that we choose humility and uh, I shared just a little bit uh, last week about just feeling like they're in in multiple areas of my life that are that are combining to bring a lot of uh, emotional, mental uh, weight. That uh, just a sense of being crushed, and the Lord saying, "That's because you're trying to accomplish change. You're trying to control control things that you have no control over. You you, you weren't meant to try to control, and uh, that I am the one who sits under the weight." Uh, of these uh, impossible or seemingly impossible situations. Uh, and I want you hidden in me. And part of that means yielding control. It means yielding the, the, the right to be understood or uh, the right to be right, um, the, the right to control. And so I, I want to invite you to, to press into the Lord in, in your journey and and ask him where are places where you want to shepherd me and what it looks like to walk in humility because i i, I believe and i i feel like i'm just starting to to taste more of of this in in this season of life that humility means freedom uh, it means being out from under weight that we weren't meant to carry and it also means being able to carry more than we thought we could carry because we're letting him carry the burden uh, and we're able to enter in uh, with, with others to love and to serve, uh, being free from being focused on, on myself uh, and, and what's happening in me and being able to give from this place of humility. Uh, last uh, uh, theme uh, uh, in that list of, uh, of hope of repentance, humility, is power. It says, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Uh, you know, and new started, new started going beyond their, the, 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 that Galilean region uh, across the Jordan into other countries. And, you know, going, to, going back to the issue of, of control, uh, the people that were coming to him uh, said so they're ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, demon possessed, those having seizures, paralytics. You want to talk about living in a place of having no control over over extremely debilitating, painful, uh, fearful 
uh, experiences of, of suffering, Jesus stepped into these places uh, of impossibility uh, in human power or effort, and he began to show the power of the kingdom of God. And it happened in tandem with the proclamation. He's, he's preaching and speaking and teaching and modeling, uh, revealing the heart of the Father. Uh, and, and this proclamation is accompanied by a demonstration of the power of God. And I just want to ask you, what, what do those crowds look like? smell like what what what, what's the feel you have you have you have the people who are coming in these places of deep brokenness of pain marge people who have been marginalized pushed to the edge because they're cursed that's why that that's why they're experiencing what they're experiencing is because they're cursed for some reason what what did they do what did their parents do uh what gods did they offend uh and then you have the people who have been who, who are going the other way uh, who have been healed and their lives have been totally rocked by the power of God. And so you have this co- incredible combination of, of brokenness and pain and, and suffering uh, meets the kingdom of God and, and it's drawing these huge crowds. Oh, what would it have been like to be there? Uh, to experience this, and, and man, I, I I I look at it now, and I said, oh, I would have been one of the one of the ones who had just left everything, uh, and and gone to be where Jesus was to to receive from Him, to follow Him, and uh, I I think that's the call, that's the call right now, uh, and that's what I want to leave you with is His call is repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Uh, and just as he called uh, Simon and Andrew and uh, uh, Peter and Andrew and James and John to follow him, his his call is follow me, follow me, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near and follow me. And I, I believe it, uh, uh, that we, as we follow him, as we live a lifestyle of repentance, that we're going to experience hope. Uh, that that in these places of repentance and confession, the Lord is going to uh, lay deep, deep foundations of humility, and in that place of submission, surrender, humility, that the the power of the gospel is able to come through us, His people, the church. Love you all so much. It's so hard not to be with you uh, in person. Uh, the Lord bless you and your household today. Thank you.